The net, it's a community effort. You cannot build a great church by people who walk in the door and out five minutes later. You can't build a great church uh, with, with full-time staff who walk in the door and out five minutes later. You need people who know how to stick together and build something with a common heart or you never build a great church. Helen and I devoted ourselves for 26 years to building a church uh, in Mount Evelyn and it took all of that time to build something great. Want to build a great nation? You cannot build a great nation until you can bring people in leadership in government together and stick at it for a long time. And that's what scares me a lot about the way Australia is doing government today. We don't know how to build people who can work together long term, honouring each other and working uh, with humble hearts and with commitment. We don't know how to do it anymore. And it's one of the reasons that our country's in trouble. It's one of the reasons sometimes our family is in trouble. The Ten Commandments were not about getting uh, God to like you. They were about adopting values that would allow God and Israel to walk together as a husband and a wife. You say, oh, Aldi, yep, you're pushing it there. You know, that's way over the top. Oh, no, no, it's not. That's exactly how it was. And I guess you've got to say this, but you know, any kind of time you talk about marriage, you've got to talk about divorce for just a moment. Because in any group this large, there has to be people sitting here that have been through the pain of divorce. And the question is, he's using the Bible, oh God, in the, in the Bible says God hates divorce. Yeah, he does, but I'll tell you why he hates divorce. It's because he's been through one. You see, the God of the Bible is a divorcee. He invited a nation to become his bride. He gave her the Ten Commandments because these were the values that would have allowed them to walk together. And she wouldn't do it. Even God couldn't make this marriage work. And sometimes we have to recognise that there may be a full heart in one party and just, just not there in the other. And no matter how hard one person tries, they can't make a marriage work. Uh, you need to know this tonight. You cannot make a marriage work with just one full-hearted individual given at their very best. It takes two full-hearted individuals. It's one of the reasons why one of the resources that I, that I bring on a night like this, and if we were to do our marriage seminar, if we were doing this for 10 weeks, the very first night we deal with what to do when you think you've married the wrong person. Because one of the reasons people never make progress in building a healthy marriage is because they are living with a suspicion that I shouldn't be married to this person. I'm, I'm married to the wrong person. And somewhere out there is the right person. So I never commit my hat. It, it's no good giving me insights to build a great marriage because I shouldn't be in it. This is the wrong person. And the moment you believe that lie, the moment you believe that, see, you've got to know this, and there is no right person. There's no one out there that is your perfect match. You're too broken to have a perfect match. You, you need too much help to have a perfect match. I mean, if Helen was looking for a perfect match, she wouldn't be married to me, I can promise you that. I'm, I'm, I'm too naughty, I'm too, I'm, I'm too in need to be her perfect match. There are only broken people. And the, the, mir the, the miracle about marriage is that someone sees enough in you to be willing to take the, the commitment. I'll take the, the imperfect with the good and we'll build something great together. And until you deal with that nonsense that the reason our marriage is no good or the reason our marriage is struggling is because I married the wrong person, you will never make progress. You've got to rip that out of your heart. It isn't true. And if I could help you to get it out of your heart, suddenly life would change because now you'd realise there is no perfect person. There is no magical person out there with whom my bad behaviour would disappear. Well, I'd be perfectly... You were, I'm not happy. Were you, were you happy when you were single? No. Well, why did you think... Getting married would change that. You were miserable single, you'd be miserable married. You need, you need help. And the reality is that when you have a lie that you believe you've married the wrong person and that's the problem, you just keep on, it's like water off the duck's back. I give you real good help and it'll just, you've got to deal with that. Marriage is the commitment to an imperfect person. And as a result, the uh, most important thing is to realise it requires two of us doesn't matter how hard one tries. Even God couldn't make this marriage with Israel. Wait, what do you want of the saddest lines you'll ever read in the Bible? Revealing a broken heart in heaven. Listen to this. The word of the Lord came to me. Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. I remember the devotion of your youth. How as a bride you followed me and loved me and followed me through the wilderness. This is what the Lord says. What fault did your... Uh, ancestors find in me that they strayed so far from me. I've heard that in counselling more than once, where one partner's sitting there with tears running down their face, and they're saying to the other person, what is it about me that you just couldn't love? What is that? 
And this is God saying it to his own people. In the very next chapter, he says, I give you a certificate of divorce and I'm sending you away. I can't take this any longer. God hates divorce because he's been through one. God is a divorcee. He knows what it feels like to have dreams perish. And as a result, he would keep you from it if he could. But it's going to take two of you to do that. And sometimes um, when people have found they've given it their best shot and they couldn't make it work, you need to realise, don't run away from God, run to him. He, he understands the pain of divorce. This is not something that's foreign to God. He understands this pain because he's been through it personally. And he's the safest person with whom to rebuild the best of the rest of your life. And I want to encourage you tonight, if you're here tonight and you've been through a divorce, I don't know your circumstances and it's not my issue, but you do need to know this. Whatever, whatever happened, whatever happened, come humbly to God's throne and say, I never want to go through that again. Um, whatever, whatever issues were mine, I own them, forgive me. Lord, uh, and, and now hear me, show me how to build a relationship that lasts. He'll do it because God is very gracious. The Ten Commandments are about a permanent life. Now, I can't deal with the theology of that anymore. Um, if, you, if you want to argue with me about that, come up, we'll do it after. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do when you want it to last? Well, it's the Ten Commandments. It helps, therefore, to know the Ten Commandments. Now, I, I just happen to know. Most people don't. Um, but I do, and here they are. First commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. Second commandment, you shall not make for yourself any graven image. Third commandment, uh, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Fifth commandment, you shall honour your mother and your father that it may be well with you that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. The sixth commandment, you shall not do murder. Seventh commandment, you shall not commit adultery. Eighth commandment, you shall not bear a stain.